Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. On this episode, we're going to uncover what David Solano, the founder of Solano's No Limit Hoops organization, believes is the key to living victoriously and how he has achieved his dreams. But before we jump into the interview, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe and share. Also, if you'd like to see us continue to provide content, please support us at patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions. Also, if you'd like to join our community, you can join us in our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. Thank you so much for being a member and engaging with us. Now, here's our interview with David Solano. Hi, David. Thanks for joining us on Chair Chats. I am so glad that you were able to join us because you put out videos out on YouTube and a lot of the things that you um, put out about resilience and um, taking responsibility and the power of yet, I think is very inspiring. And I thought it would be a perfect fit to interview you for chair chats. Um, and so I wanted to first start out with getting to know you a little bit better and having our audience get to know you a bit, a bit better. Um, so can you give us a brief introduction to who David Solano is? Um, well, first of all, nice. Thank you for interviewing me. This is, this is amazing. It's an amazing experience to be interviewed. I, I've never really had this before. Um, I, I'm just a, First, the first thing I am is I'm a husband for the past 16 years. I don't want anything else to define me besides being a husband and a dad of two young girls. And, and that's, that's what defines me. Everything else is just kind of just helps me keep that stuff in the center of my life. But I'm, I've been a school teacher for the past 21 years. I'm in the middle of my 21st year teaching right now. I've taught fourth grade, second grade, and fifth grade. And I also coach basketball. I've been a junior high basketball coach since about 2005 but before that i was a volunteer coach at any rec center in west phoenix that would take me i've been doing that for about 20 22 23 years now and i also last a couple of years out of my own nonprofit organization that help keep disadvantaged youth off the streets to help them give them an outlet so they have somewhere to go in the evening i'm just trying to keep these young kids you know a lot of the kids in, in tough neighborhoods they go on the wrong path in life and it's because they don't have a place to go to have fun. So um, I know from the video, most people can't see um, what your disability is. So can you just give us a quick sentence about what it is that you live with? So I was born with a disability. And one thing, I don't know much about it. It's kind of odd. I never really learned about it. My mom told me there were like a couple of things I needed to know. It doesn't, it doesn't get worse with age, and it doesn't really affect my lifespan. She said, David, everything else, you determine. In your videos, you often make reference to your parents. Um, I know for me, my parents were very instrumental in creating my character. How influential were your parents on your upbringing? Oh, my parents were huge. They um. They taught me the philosophy, anything is possible. And they, um, my mom both pushed me to a different level. They never let me use my, my disability, or I call it a handicap. I don't use the word disability at all because disability means not able. And my mom would never let me use the term not able in my house. I had to say it was a handicap because I needed to do a different, I needed to do whatever task I needed to do my own way. And my mom never let me use those terms but they were, they were my, they were the rocks, they were the muscles, they were the tears behind all my battles. And they, um, 
my mom just, it was, it was amazing. She, I didn't even know the word advocate until I became older, but she was the true meaning of the word advocate back in the 1980s when, in the early, late 70s when advocacy wasn't really looked at as a big time. And my mom really pushed me to go to everywhere I needed to go in life. And every time I wanted to give up, she kind of told me, we got to keep moving. You got to keep moving forward. We're not raising you to be a second, a second rate person. We're raising you to be the best you can possibly be. You work with a lot of youth who don't have that same support at home. Um, how does your organization, Solano's No Limit Hoops, help reach out to those youth who may not have that same support? You know, I'm a real person with them. And they follow my direction, they follow my lead because they know that I'm real. I, I grew up in the same neighborhood that they're growing up in. And I tell them, hey, I had all these circumstances. First of all, I'm Hispanic. You guys are Hispanic or, or African-American. And we already have, sometimes in coming, and coming from this neighborhood, we already have a strike against us. Now, I had those strikes against me, but I also had a disability. So now I have two strikes against, still made it to do something positive in life. So don't come and tell me that you have these strikes against you and you can't make it. Because I have the two negative strikes and I talk to the kids about it and they're like, man, I got to do something. If coach did this, then I got to do something different in my life too. And we talk about it now that I've become a teacher and I've learned about different things and how different avenues to give kids to, to take, take off in life. We have a lot of kids who have done a lot of great things. My program has only been around for three years, but we've had a kid who's an army ranger right now. I have, I have two girls that were the first in their, in their families to get their master's degrees. We have a lot of kids that we've helped become something different in life, all because I keep talking to them all the time about success. I, talk to, I always talk about success, and I know they'll be watching this video, and they'll be like, hey, coach, you're the man. Thank you for, for giving us a shout-out. And, and even the boys who's Army Ranger and other boys who've done great things in life, we're always preaching to them and teaching them, just keep working, keep working. Who cares if you fall or you fail? We're going to keep moving every day. Do you ever run into youth that want to just give up? And if so, what do you say to them? I, um, I say this the last few years. I, I lost the ability to walk about four years ago. I hurt my leg and for some reason it quit working. And I tell the, and, and the kids look at me and I tell them, guys, look, I know you want to give up. Everything seems against you right now, but look, I, I, I have a disability. You know, all, all my life I walk. All of a sudden, I can't walk anymore. Did I give up? Am I still here coaching you every day? Am I still here picking up the wheelchair and putting it in the backseat of my car? Am I still going to work every day in my wheelchair, picking it back on my chair? I can't push it with my hands, so I got to walk it by my, my feet. I'm still showing up every single day. Every night I come to my program, I'm, I'm not getting paid for this, guys. I'm coming here because I care about you succeeding. I could be at home right now watching TV, getting my wife mad at me over dinner. But no, no I'm gym with you guys, giving you guys a place to come and have fun. And that, and that to me is, is, is what's positive. And the kids look at that and they're like, you're right, coach. I, I got to make, I got I to give an effort too. Because I said, I'm coming already 100% with you. I'm, in, I'm out of my house. I'm in the gym with you guys. I got money. To, we, we finally got funding to open a gym. Now you guys got to be the next success because one day I'm not going to be here and you guys are going to have to carry songs on them and hoops under your name. Did you always dream about helping youth or do, being a basketball coach since you were young? My dad, my dad gave me the love for sports. But as I got older, I started, be, I became really good at basketball. And I did, and I remember my first year teaching, all these kids in my class, all these boys were arguing in class. And I was like, what are you guys arguing about? They're like, well, he, his team beat my team. And I'm like, you guys are on the same school. Why are you guys on a different team? And they're like, well, the rec center puts us on different teams. And I was like, well, that's a dumb idea. You guys all go to the same school. So I went down to the rec center and I said, hey, I want to volunteer coach. I had no idea what I was doing. I'd like to tell you that we were a great team that first year, but we were horrible. We <laughs> stunk it up. But the kids had so much fun. And then all of a sudden I had, I had, I picked a desire that I'm like, this is actually really fun. I got to get better at it, but this is fun. And it's funny because I, that first year group was in 1997. And I still talked to half of that team on 1997 in 2019. In fact, half of them will probably watch this video on, you, 
Wherever you post it, half of them will watch this video. I say, well, <laughs> remember me in 1997? But yeah, it, it's, it evolved into something that I didn't know I was going to do. I just thought I was going to help these kids not argue in my class the rest of the school year. And 22 years later, I'm still doing it. And now I have my, my own program. It sounds like you've had a lot of um, successes in your life, victories, uh, breakthroughs through, uh, you know, different people's standards of what they thought may have been possible for you in your life. So my question is, have you ever had a time when you felt like a failure? Oh, failure. I... Yes, I feel all the time. I um, fa failure is hard because I, I believe I I like failure though. I I love fa I I love losing more than I love winning. I really do because I love I love I love losing because it allows you to look at what you're really doing in life. It allows you to really hone in on all your skills that you had that you thought were great and overcome them. I remember um, wanting to become a basketball coach. Everybody declined me for a job. I went to 13 interviews and everyone told me no. And I was like, man, but I was angry. The, 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 the rejections was, was killing me, but it also made me really believe in what I wanted, to, what I was believing in my style. And those, those losses and those and turning me down made me probably a better person and a better coach in, in, my, in my life. And even like growing up as a kid, being told I couldn't participate in PE in elementary school, it made me want to be a PE teacher, even though I'm not a PE teacher, but it made me really want to work with that part of the, with that part of the school, you know, and, and that, so failure, failure is, failure is what drives me. I, th I think um, if I didn't have failure, I wouldn't have my basketball program. Because even trying to get my basketball program off the ground, all the people that wanted, that, that were supposed to help me, all left me high and dry and left me hanging all the time. And it made me turn more corners to get that, to get to victory. So you feel like failure is one of the best teachers. Yes. My mom, my dad, and failure. Those are the three that lead me to success. Failure is a, is a big deal. A lot of people don't take risks because they have that fear of failure. So what words would you say to encourage somebody who's afraid to move because of that fear of failure? I always say you got to shoot, you shoot your shot. I tell the kids, shoot your shot. If you make it, you win. If you miss it, you practice tomorrow to shoot again. But every time you shoot that shot, you're going to win or make it or miss it. You get another day to practice it, but you have to keep practicing that shot. Shoot the shot and let's live with what, what the results are of your shot. And I, and I believe I'm always going to shoot my shot no matter what. I'm always going to say what I have to say. I'm going to do what I have to do. And I'm going to live with the consequences if it's a win, if it's a loss. I mean, I've had undefeated teams that I didn't like practicing with because they were undefeated. I had a team that was one in nine that I loved and I cried when the season was over because they worked so hard. So as a basketball coach... You're familiar with both losing and with winning. What do you think are the three qualities to a victory mindset? It's tough, because when I look at it, I, I, I like to have kids visualize something. For me, for me to be able to do stuff with my smaller arms, I have to be able to visualize doing it. And I tell the kids, you gotta go home at night before the game, you gotta visualize winning. And that's like setting a goal, you gotta set that goal but you gotta visualize what that goal is gonna be or what the end result's gonna be. And so we talk about visualizing everything that we do. The next thing is being prepared. What, what you gotta do to get to that goal? Like my power of yet list, I haven't done this yet, but I'm gonna do this next. And you, you start to set that, those goals, those small little yet, your small little yet list, and then you got that down. And then the third one is you gotta work hard. Winning doesn't happen the day of the game. Winning happens the day before. Winning happens two weeks before. The only reason I'm winning today is because of all the work that my mom gave me, made me do when I was five years old. That's why I hold a pen with my smaller hands, because of all the work I do when I was in physical therapy between two to six years old. And so 
you got to put that work in there and tell the kids it's, it's all about visualizing it, the power of yeah. It's all about putting, being prepared and putting in that work. Thank you, David, for joining us on Chair Chats. Um, is there any last words you would like to leave with us today? Yeah, th there's a few things I would like to leave off with. Um, at least one of them would be, I believe that you should learn from me that anything is possible in life. Uh, when I was born, a lot of doctors told my parents, I probably wouldn't have a, a, normal life, a normal lifestyle. I probably wouldn't be that independent of a person. But they gave me that, they took me home and they gave me that, that work ethic. They told me, they gave me that drive to believe that anything is possible. I inspire young kids all over the, my area to do something greater in life. And if I can do this, then why can't you do that? Because in, in true reality, we all can uplift everybody else. And that's what, that's what I think people should learn from me is anything is possible if, if you have the right mindset. Thank you, David, for sharing your insights and experiences. I really appreciated what you said about failure and how failure can be one of your greatest teachers. I also like what you said regarding a victory mindset and how it requires a vision, being prepared, and working hard. I'd like to hear from you. How do you approach failure? Are you scared of it? Or does it excite you because you get to learn something different? Also, what do you think goes into a victory mindset? Please comment and engage with us either here or on our private Facebook community group called Victoriously Living. Also, if you'd like to see more content from us, please support us at patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions. Don't forget to subscribe and share. And until we meet again, be blessed. Thank you.